without a doubt for this race but Joey Greenan alongside him, an Irishman who could cover himself in glory and indeed could uh, do possibly a very unique thing and that is beat this brilliant Brazilian. 74, there's Calvin Fish, again a Van Diemen which are dominating this race and behind him, number 25, that's uh, Jesper Willemsen, who led the championship. He comes from Holland, and he led the uh, championship earlier on in the year. There they go, number 26, the other car, Chris Nissen, a very, a very good uh, driver indeed. So the Europeans are well to the fore. Down they come, Greenan on the outside, to Silva on the inside, and number 74, Kelvin Fish, figuring very well. It's all clean, uh, P.J. Fallon well in there also. P.J. made a very good start, so I thought it was a bit of bustling and boring in that first corner. So after we go off into the back straight to BOAC corner, down to Duckham's, all spreading out for to a dive into that Duckham's corner. And Joey Greenan has taken the lead. Joey Greenan leads to Silva. In third place, I think it's Fish at the moment. We'll have to confirm that, but Pat Duffy is also well in there in the beat sponsored car. An absolutely magnificent piece of driving by Joey to get the lead in this situation. Because to beat the Silva, the only one way is to lead from the front. Keep the Silva behind you, because he was so quick in practice, Joey's got to use all his race craft, which he's used over the weekend by winning two races already, to keep the Silva behind him. So it's Green and De Silva, Nissen, but there's Willemsen coming up. And Pat Duffy well in there also. So it's uh, Nissen, we reckon, in third place. And then Fish in fourth place. And somebody right out in the grass there. It looked like Tim Davis who won one of the heats. But uh, De Silva making a bit for the outside. Round the outside of Shell. He doesn't do it. Still it's Green and Dream. Green and driving the race of his life at the moment. Trying to fend off this Brazilian. Joey, every time he gets into a race car, he drives as if his very life depends on it. And I saw him looking from left to right there in his mirror, very calm, relaxed at the moment. But Joey, a very excitable driver at the best of times. But over this weekend, he's, he's been simply dominating for him. Now, De Silva seems to be in a bit of trouble. He's been chased by third place man Calvin Fish at the moment. In fact, we think it's Neeson. Neeson in third place, number 26 is showing there. And De Silva certainly not dominating at this stage. Gets very sideways, very ragged, quite extraordinary. Joy Green and leading De Silva. Neeson in third place. Then Fish, then Willemson, then Duffy, and then P.J. Ballard. What a magnificent race this is turning out to be. Cars literally all looking for the one square inch of track that, there's a, that there isn't available. As they're down by the fourth straight, down into Shell. Some beautiful racing this. Into the Shell corner. Joey taking the inside line, but he's giving a little bit of room. A little too much room. In fact, there was a slight mistake there because he could have been easily being punted off by the silver. But a 20 lap race, there's plenty of laps yet left to go. Well, uh, the silver nearly had him this time. He's trying again. He's going to try and go around the outside, but there ain't much room there, but he's done it. That was sensational. That's why he is so good. A magnificent move by the silver. And again, as we saw that happen earlier today in the saloon car race, but a magnificent move maneuver by the silver. I only think that Joey might have made a mistake for that to happen. So Joey Green and now down into second place, and he mustn't hold up uh, these others too much, or De Silva's going to walk away into the distance, but that was a fabulous overtaking maneuver, and a very hairy, dangerous place to do it. Nissen's now trying to crawl past Green, and that's Willemson, number 25, but De Silva right out on the grass, and look at the advantage he's getting here. Green and in second, surely Nissen will try. Kelvin Fitz, 74, then Willemson. Do we see P.J. Fallon in picture? But it's uh, Ayrton De Silva who as expected, dominates this one at the moment. Then Greenan leading this amazing traffic jam. And I had already opened up about a one second gap to 21 year old Brazilian from San Paulo. San Paulo, Nelson, Nelson PK country. So now I think the race we've got to be quite realistic looks if it's going to be for second place. And what a race that is. Chris Nissen then, Kelvin Fish, the third of those two cars. Then we have Willemsen, yes for Willemsen, but uh, De Silva romping away. And look at that man's car control, it's absolutely beautiful. It is uh, well known that Mandela is not an easy place to learn. But this is an outstanding performance by Joey Green. And the Van Diemen RF82 dominating uh, this particular race in, in practice and with the homegrown Crosleys really not matching up to the English built car. Those are all Van Diemen's that you see in picture, and in fact, it's Van Diemen's in the first probably seven or eight places at the moment. Yes, I think that's correct, and P.J. Fallon putting in a terrific drive, he's pulled himself up onto the back of this group, so with a bit of luck and with a few more laps, we might see P.J. in the thick of things. So we're still watching the stars for second place, still the same order, Chris Nissen there, 
Hyde and Bird under tremendous pressure from Kelvin Fish. And then uh, Pat Duffy really beginning to pressure. And somebody's lost their nose count. That's one of the uh, forum visitors. There's Pat Duffy on the outside, challenging now for Kelvin Fish. Tremendous drive by the Irish uh, Nationwide Formula 4 champion last year. But that is Joey Green in its second place, proudly displaying the shamrock on the front of the car. Now, Pat Duffy is um, uh, uh, the dark horse in this race. He's putting a lot of pressure on these European drivers. It'll be interesting to see how he fares. He's uh, a good 13 more laps to go. And an immense amount of uh, dropping and changing, I think. Uh, we wonder, did Kelvin Fish miss a place there? In fact, Pat Duffy is his upper place. Pat Duffy, number 33, is up ahead of Kelvin Fish, and that's some going. Fish fighting back on the outside, number 74, Pat Duffy on the inside. So a tre another tremendous performance uh, by an Irishman up into fourth place in our reckoning at the moment. Now this is the dice now, Pat Duffy there just pulling away. And he can keep a cool head and just concentrate on the car ahead of him. I think he, the way he's driving he'll be able to pull up another position. Duffy was uh, the man that gave uh, Joey Green and all the opposition in the Irish race yesterday, and he really is certainly going. He's in very distinguished company here. And look at Joey Greenan's mastery. We were inclined to forget sometimes that the age of the silver was way out of the lead of this one, but Joey Greenan matching and beating some of the best in Europe there. 26 Christmas and still in third place. Fourth place now, Pat Duffy, and that's them coming streaming down the hill now. Then uh, we have Kelvin Fish and Willemson going rather disappointingly here this afternoon. Yes, uh, one possibly expected a little more from, but then Mondello really sorts the men out from the boys. Maybe he had some problems, I don't know. But at the moment, the Irish lads, Pat Duffy, PJ Fallon, and of course, Joey Greening are put, putting in some terrific performances. There he is, that man for silver, who uh, was led for the first couple of laps by Joey Greening, and to the much delight, and uh, having to go past now some of the back markers, no problem there, that uh, looks like Ten Catty, another one of the uh, foreigners. He's from Holland, 25-year-old driver in a Delta. And the Deltas really just haven't figured here this weekend. You have to have a Van Diemen to do well at Mondello this weekend. It's a very tight and very difficult track, Mondello. So a, 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 a special car is required, and Van Diemen seems to be that car. All the first five, six cars are all Van Diemen's. Ralph Furman here this weekend from Van Diemen. There's Joey Greenham. There's Nissen, there's Duffy, there's Kelvin Fitch, not showing that well. There's Willemson and there's B.J. Fallon. Now, with Pat Duffy chasing Nissen, and they're pulling up just a slight bit on Joey Green. And Joey Green had pulled out a little more down there. That gap is closing down. At one stage, it was up to one and a half seconds. It's now closing a little. So with Pat Duffy's pressure, Nissen is being able to get into gear a little better, and he's closing up on Joey Green. So Nissen, but he can't, uh, he's having problems because he's got a gun his rear as well as try and catch Joey Greenan, that constant pressure from Pat Duffy and a tremendous performance by both uh, Greenan and Duffy and once again Duffy closes down there at Duffy seems to be no problem to him yeah, Pat had some problems with that corner in his, yesterday's race for the Irish Championship, but now he seems to have it fully sorted out, and he's getting in that corner exceptionally well. And Joey running up on the dirt on the inside, throwing stones, gravel, and everything else he can at drivers behind. That's a very deliberate maneuver, maneuver by Joey, and it works wonders as well when you throw stones back at the drivers behind you. Well, with 12 laps completed, De Silva way out of the lead, but this is the entertaining dice for second place. Joey Green in there, number 20, just ahead of 26 to so Chris Nissen. And then right on his tail, we have Pat Duffy. Second, Green in the hills, Freight Van Diemen. And there's the leader, and what a drive. This man is amazing because it's a very closely very tightly restricted form of racing. You're only allowed to use a certain specification engine. The tires are all the same, and uh, really everything being equal, it's quite outstanding that somebody should dominate it like this. Already he's following in Tommy Byrne's footsteps. And in fact, both of them, uh, Tommy Byrne drove this particular category in this particular car last year, the Van Diemen car, and he made it from that step, more or less within the space of a year, into Formula One. I was talking to his manager earlier on today, Dennis Rustin, who's looking after the silver here, and he said already that he's talking to Formula One teams. Formula One teams are interested, very interested in them. Anyone that can show such dominance has got to be a very, very talented pilot indeed. And we saw a quick flash of just how far ahead he 
was, though, because uh, second place man Jerry Greenham was just coming up the Bardol straight into Dunlop as De Silva was peeling off another lap. There's Greenham. There's this very entertaining dice between uh, Chris Nissen and Pat Duffy being watched rather closely by uh, Jasper Willemson who started the season extremely well and then fell back a bit. Uh, once, uh, of course, De Silva and indeed Calvin Fish got going, there wasn't anybody else that could touch them. Pat Duffy must be in a feeling very frustrated at the moment. Every attempt he makes to go by, a, a Nissan just seems to be that, just that car length ahead to make it impossible. But Pat driving a very, very controlled race here. So Duffy desperately trying to get uh, up into third place. 74, Kelvin Fish just going through picture there. There's Willems at 25. P.J. Fallon holding on very well to him indeed. Another back marker, Tenkati, I think, in the way again. And uh, we just hope that he's going to be very watchful for the waving blue flag from the marshals, which will tell him to get out of the way of this dice because Joey Green is just about to catch him now. They should be able to take him on the forward straight. In yeah, this back marker, car number three, Henry Vollenberg, driving a Delta, a car that isn't at all suited to, to Mondello Park. It doesn't put the power down well out of slow corners, which to a great degree Mondello is. That is Vollenberg is going through there. Uh, Henny Vollenberg, uh, the veteran Dutch driver, 41 off, and uh, that is one of the top Irishmen, Jay Pollock. Jay Pollock in the ditch there in the uh, Crosley 51 out that really hasn't shaped up to the Van Diemen opposition this weekend. Now, an interesting situation just has just arisen. The back marker's holding up third and fourth places. Let's see how they manage to get, get around this. And I think they've got around the problem OK. Well, they're all true. They're all true this time. Didn't really make that much difference, but it looked a bit awkward as they went into Dunlop there. But it's still Joey Green and Chris Nissen, Pat Duffy, a little bit further back, maybe, because of that back marker, and 74, Kelvin Fish. Kelvin Fish, who has already secured second place in the Euro Series this year with five second places on the row, but he doesn't look like he's going to make it six this weekend. No, no, he's caught back in that position. He's not been able to make any ground. In fact, he gained greatly from the back marker who held up Nissen and Duffy. Kelvin and next Carter and a very, very fine pilot at the moment, though, caught back in fifth position. I turn to Silver then on his merry way as he has been all season and he's had a pretty busy couple of weeks because he flew in from Italy to take part in this race where he'd been testing uh, one of the works kart concerns so he still does kart racing despite the fact now that he's in the, his second season of uh, the more conventional racing cars. There's Joey Green in now in second place. He's pulling away a bit undoubtedly from business and, and Pat Duffy just cannot find that gap past the Dane. And into third and fourth places still. The situation is very much status quo. No changes, but everybody, you can be assured, are driving their heart out. And an uncustomary mistake from Jay Pollock that we saw there earlier in the bank. I uh, fear maybe something might have broken or maybe he had a tap with another car because this isn't like Jay at all. Jay rarely ever makes a mistake. And we wonder will Pat Duffy try and make a last charge. He was very late on the brakes then, came in very deep into Castro there. Joey Green and Midmark going through Bardol, still the same order. Calvin Fish, the last of those car in picture. Second, third, fourth, and fifth places. And behind them we have Willensen in sixth and uh, P.J. Fallon in seventh. In fact, I've just heard about that accident with Jay Pollock. In fact, himself and Tim Davies came together, and that in some way explains Jay Pollock's accident. Joey Green and then with two laps to go, and a tremendous drive from Joey. He's had a fantastic weekend. He won the Irish Formula Ford, Super Ford, Betts and Hedges round. He won the 1600, and here he is lying second to Ayrton de Silva. That is absolutely no disgrace. There he goes, Ayrton de Silva, in the distinctive yellow and black colours of Brazil, his home country. Down he comes. Looks almost certain now that he's going to put yet another cup on his sideboard. Second place man Joey Green and third Chris Nissen, that's called the fish in fifth place. And our race leader De Silva 
At only 21 years of age, he must have an enormous future. He does indeed, and um, quite an indication of his talents is how smooth he looks. At that time, slightly ragged, but he doesn't seem flustered. The car isn't running off onto the dirt. It's a fair indication that this pilot has a lot of talent. He's won at Donington, he's won at Zandvoort, he's won at Hockenheim, and he's won at Zelta in Belgium and the Yolanda's Ring. And it's going to win also here at Mandelo, almost certainly. Out over the curbs, maybe a little bit unnecessary because he's still trying. Down he comes. Out of Dunlop. And that's the fist of the air and the checkered flag once again for Aiton de Silva. What a magnificent driver. But look at this guy. Uh, second place looks like Jerry Green, but third is far from decided. No, indeed. They're neck and neck to Dunlop Corner, but I think that's going to be the order of the way they ran in the race. No changes. Nobody made a mistake. So the order is, as we read out, the Silva first, Green in second, Nissen third, Duffy fourth, and Fish fifth. So Jerry Greenan can be justly proud. There's de Silva that we're going to know extremely well in the future and I would be almost certain that a face that we're going to see in Grand Prix racing before very long. Uh, earlier on this morning, the GT race, an interesting little postscript to that, evidently Frank uh, custom designed cars have always uh, won the debut motor race, so an amazing achievement and he's managed to keep it going. We're now looking at the runners for the Windrum's production saloon car race for cars up to 3,600 cc. In other words, the big banners, the big saloons here at Mandela. A fabulous field of motor cars, and of course, our fellow commentator uh, during the weekend, Brian Chute, out in this particular race, which will give us here in the box uh, an added personal interest in the whole thing. It's mainly Capri's, but cheekily on the front row of the grid and in pole position is going to be John Smith from Ballymena, number 77. There he is in his Opel Cadet, a two-litre GTE Opel Cadet, who, uh, after they re-examined the times, was re-allotted onto pole position for the George Windrum sponsored race. George Windrum, incidentally, a competitor in the saloon car races for possibly all up to 20 years in Ireland, and now putting a little bit back into the sport that he's enjoyed so much. Alongside him will be uh, Brian Chute, uh, two warm-up laps, incidentally. Uh, Brian Chute in the BISF Capri. There it is, just coming into picture now. And uh, he's had a very good season. He's had a number of wins, particularly good run at Phoenix Park a fortnight ago. And also in the front row of the grid, number 44, Eddie Regan, in his RS2000. So there, and uh, somebody off on the inside, there uh, have Duckham's on the warm-up lap. That's a, a, a bit unusual, really. And it's Paul Bishop with it, number two from Dublin in his Ford Capri. So Paul Bishop, uh, uh, very surprisingly, getting into a bit of trouble there on the inside of Duckham's in the warm-up laps. And he'd be a bit frustrated with that, I would imagine, David Kennedy. Yeah, rather surprising, probably warming up the tyres, uh, maybe had a blowout or something. But a rather strange grid layout in this respect, because the first ten cars have qualified inside the lap record. I don't think I've ever remembered an occasion with so many cars inside the lap record from John Smith all the way down to Full Sparks. And I think we will see some full sp some sparks flying here. So that front row of the grid again consists of, as the car you see pulling up here, John Smith, the Opel Cadet GTE, white car, car number 77, in a time of 68 seconds, 0.77. And very close to him, our fellow commentator, Brian Chu, car to the right of his, a Capri, number six, 68.87. Well, David, I have to uh, sort of uh, correct you slightly on that one. Actually, you're going from a lap record that's in the program, and in fact, it was Derek Shortall who broke the lap record uh, in a recent race, and it hasn't been published in the program. He did uh, 68.8, but the fact of the matter is that John Smith is still inside the lap record, and Brian Chute is right on it. So, and Derek Shortall, there's Eddie Regan, uh, the man who, one of the men who started uh, Mandelo here, and uh, it's very nice to see him out racing 15 years later. Little Legs Regan as he's known, number 44. So, on pole position, John Smith on the inside, Brian Chute in the big three-meter Capri in the middle of the field. But it's Eddie Regan who gets the best start. Eddie Regan, number 44 in the RS2000, a superb start. Down into Shell for the first time. Regan leads Chute. Smith is third. Shortall is fourth. Tuttle in the outside there. And right at the very back 
number two there was the man that was in trouble with the warm-up laps, Paul Bishop. But look at this, Regan from, from Ryan Chute. A fresh class start from Eddie. A uh, little or no wheel spin, pulled over onto the inside side of the track and able to block off Brian Chute. So first place, car number 44, the Escort RS2000 of Eddie Regan. Second, the BASSF sponsored Capri, car number six by Brian Chute. And third place car, car number 77, John Smith in the Opel Cadet GTE. And I've actually driven both of these cars in recent times, raced them around here in Dollar, so it's a, an interesting contrast between the two cars. The Escort is far more agile, but the Big Capri does have the straight line bar, and that's what Brian Chute will be trying to do when he comes out of Dunlop, get it out cleanly, line it up so it can have a blast down the inside, and uh, hope to take over the lead down into Shell. But uh, that's easier said than done. Any region then, Brian Chute. Then look at Derek Shortall in fourth place. Uh, and then we have uh, John Wood in fifth place in his RS2000. End of the first lap, still Regan leading. Ryan Chute hanging on there in second place. Shortall desperate to get further up the grid. Shortall, the man that has had more production salute car wins than anyone here at Fidello. And being very disappointed with so far down the grid. Then we saw a shot of John Wood followed by Reg Tuttle. But the battle is really on for first place. So, in fact, it's a very interesting situation because it's a complete reversal of the grid positions, which, ran, which were John Smith first quickest, Brian Chute second, and Eddie Regan third. And as in the race, it's quite the opposite. Eddie Regan now is in first place, Brian Chute is in second, and John Smith is in third. So I think we've got some sparks that are going to fly from these tin toppers. And Eddie Regan sensationally at the moment pulling away in the two-liter car. The three-liter to three behind him. And then John Smith in the rebuilt Opel, he had a huge accident earlier on in the year at one of the hill climbs and the car has only recently come out of competition. 55 there is John Wood in his first season of racing, also had some good results this year. And Derek Shortall amazingly being dropped by the first three. How unusual. Now John Smith is looking very menacing in third place. He's taking a steady, steady course. I think what he's probably going to play is wait for half of the race and see if Brian Chute is going to push Eddie and push Eddie into making a mistake and have something of a, a, a similar happening that happened in Formula 4. The two leaders take themselves out. But John Smith, a very aggressive driver, a very hard driver, a very confident driver. Wood in the low freeze car then been shattered by Tuttle, but we're back with the leaders and it's very close indeed. John Smith, who's got experience in all types of racing, including many, many years of Formula Atlantic, has uh, concentrated on production saloons in the last number of years there in third place, number 77, and Regan, another man with years and years of experience behind him, also raced single-seaters, has raced particularly uh, sports cars, but uh, totally enjoys himself now, the tin tops, the blind tube second, and uh, once again, we can't but be surprised at the fact that Shortall isn't in the picture at the moment. Nice little battle here. Phil Sparks in the Alfa Romeo, sponsored by Wyndham, the sponsor of the whole race, are uh, far back also. He's been doing very well in that car uh, in the north of Ireland and at Phoenix Park, where really he won. Yes, these first three cars. And Brian Tute making a move on the inside, but no, he's been blocked by Eddie. Eddie keeping his eye on the mirror to make sure he leaves not a square inch or one foot of tarmac at him available for Brian Tute to make the move. And all the while, John Smith is hanging on in there. They're making a small little gap now to Derek Shortall, but uh, literally a blanket can cover these three cars. And John Smith making the move down the inside, pushing Brian Tute. And there was contact there, definitely contact there, and it's unsettled, Brian. Chute has dropped back a little bit, giving Regan an advantage, and Shortall a chance to close up on both of them. But this is just the break that Eddie Regan needed. He was under enormous pressure from these two up till then. Chute now getting settled again after that incident, and uh, rising back, a very powerful physical car to drive. There's Shortall just going through a picture in fourth place. And a superb race, very close stuff indeed. And we've just been informed by the timekeepers that car number 44 has had a jump start, so he's got a 30-second penalty, and that's our leader. Our leader, Eddie Regan, is now down the field. So, in fact, our actual leader is Brian Shute, the red car, the, the Bassap sponsored Capri number six. Brian Shute is now in the lead, even though you see him in second place on the road. So that brings John Smith up in the second place, and I'm sure the drivers have been informed of this by their pits. So now, effectively, Eddie Regan is really out of the race. Oh, what a shame. Uh, and Eddie Regan, number 44, then, who's going so well and withstanding all this pressure on the road, uh, really effectively back. Oh, he must be back in about 10th place at the moment if you add on that 10th, so 30-second penalty. So, 
and uh, it's Smith making a bid for the lead. Remember that these are the two cars who are fighting for the lead of the Wyndham production saloon race. The shoot holds on on the inside. Regan lifting the wheel, but shoot and Smith are the ones that really matter now. Shoot and Smith in second and third place on the road, but effectively battling for the lead. And what a disappointment for Eddie, having made a terrific start. It didn't really look like that much of a jump start, but he gets his 30 seconds penalty, so that's ended his race. But he's been more than determined just to show how well he can